We do begin with a special report on drug trafficking throughout Utah. I-15 has now seen a more than 500% increase in two specific drugs being trafficked through Utah, and the fight is taking its toll on first responders' mental health. ABC4 Southern U correspondent Garrett James has that story. Over the last five years, there has been a dramatic increase in drug flow along I-15. Just in 2022, a 526% increase in fentanyl was seized across the state, and over a 600% increase in cocaine was seized. This report was taken by the Rocky Mountain High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area, which consists of Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, and Utah. So it's a significant increase. It's something to be worried about and aware of. The police department believes that a lot of these drugs are moving in from the south along I-15 through Utah, but that first stop along I-15 is St. George. So why exactly are we seeing these numbers skyrocket? Well, if we're talking fentanyl, it's the fact that it's easy to produce. It's cheap to produce, I should say, and uh, it doesn't take very much to get the effect that a lot of other drugs offer. With this increase, there's also been an increase in overdoses. Just in Washington County, there were over 1,300 overdoses. Almost 60% of the drug overdoses from 2022 occurred right here in St. George. Witnessing someone overdose will take a toll on anybody, but it is really taking a toll on some first responders and their mental health. It's, it's taxing on everybody to re respond to these cases over and over again where they've overdosed, we save their life, and it turns around and, and, and starts over again. And you take that and then it just gets more and more per year. It, it's taxing for everybody, for the family, for the people at the hospital, for the first responders. Michael Gross, the chief of the Apple Valley Fire Department, has been a first responder for over 20 years. He has encountered overdoses firsthand back in Washington state. Those numbers have increased over the years. So in a 20-something year career, in the first half of it, not being able to recall any to I have some very vivid memories of a number of them over the last 10 years. Did it ever get any easier? I wouldn't say it's easier, but it's certainly in the medical side of it and responding to calls. For me, it hasn't been an issue that I take it home with me. It's something that I, I'm i concerned about and I feel for the people and there's, there's emotions involved, but my job is to go out and treat the patient. That doesn't mean everyone can do it, but if they can't, Michael tells me that they have each other. I'm sure some people do, and there's some scenes that are more difficult than others that, you know, they stick with you longer. Um, and each person has their triggers that are going to bring back memories. Most people in the fire service, they are able to work with it. And, and we do have programs if we have a traumatic event that we can call in counselors, um, your coworkers, your other people that are on scene that you can communicate with about what you saw and, and then how to deal with it is, it's a big benefit that we have because the fire service and medical and police are all, they're very concerned about each other. So if there's an incident that is traumatic for us on our side of it, then we have a, a network of people that are there to support us. In St. George Garrett James, ABC4 News.